Welcome to episode 22 of the Self Care 101 podcast with your host, Pooja K. McClymont, helping people achieve their full potential with effective self care through wellbeing coaching. Thank you so much for listening today. On this episode, I'm going to talk about energy and more specifically, energy exchange. I want to spend a little time talking about the science of energy first. I think it's really important to understand the context in which we're talking about energy and this will hopefully be helpful for those who are not quite convinced about energy and energy exchange. Science now accepts that the universe, including us, is made up of energy, not matter. This is not actually new, it was posted by Socrates in Europe way back when and by the ancient rishis in India thousands of years before that. Socrates said that energy or soul is separate from matter and that the universe is made of energy, pure energy which was there before man and other material things like earth came along. However, at the end of the 17th century, Newtonian physics became the cornerstone of science and it was based on the theory that there is only matter and nothing else. The whole universe is a machine made of matter and so are we. Kind of like the world is flat, right? (laughs) Medical science is still stuck in the Newtonian concept, even though the rest of science has now moved on to quantum physics. Quantum physics... Now, this is so interesting. Quantum physics says that as you go deeper and deeper into the workings of the atom, you see that there is nothing there, just energy waves. It says an atom is actually an invisible force field, a kind of miniature tornado, which emits waves of electrical energy. Now, those energy waves can be measured and their effects can be seen, but they are not a material reality. They have no substance because they are well, (laughs) they're just electricity. So science now embraces the idea that the universe is made of energy. How cool is that? (laughs) Helps people like me kind of back up the sort of woo-woo as people tend to say it about energy and, you know, things like the law of attraction and any of the other things that basically don't have a scientific explanation. It's kind of cool now that we're getting this back up really in what we're saying, because it's true. (laughs) Now we're, of course, we're made up of atoms and atoms are continuously giving off and absorbing light and energy all the time. It doesn't stop even when we sleep. Every cell in the body has its atoms lined up in such a way that it has a negative and positive voltage inside and outside. This is why sleep is so important. This is why we talk about how imperative it is to sleep, that this whole trying to live your life on four hours of sleep and still do a 24 hour day is ridiculous, okay? Because every cell in our body, it's a miniature battery. Each cell has 1.4 volts of energy. Now that's not much, but when you multiply by the number of cells in your body, get this, 50 trillion, you get a total voltage of 700 trillion volts of electricity in your body. Jeez, that's pretty strong stuff. And this is what the Chinese call qi, and is also the energy used in hands-on healing. So I have a Reiki practice, some of you might know this, some of you might not, but I have a Reiki practice, and that is all based on energy. It can even be measured outside the body for a certain radius, so depending on the sophistication of the instrument. And guess which has the stronger electromagnetic energy field, your head or your heart? (laughs) I'm not even going to answer that, I'm going to leave that for you. What do you think has the stronger electromagnetic energy field, your head or your heart? Now here's another interesting fact which relates to our lives. Each atom has its own distinct frequency or vibration. And quantum physicists study the energetic effect when atoms collide. Now, they don't measure, they're not studying their matter. What they see is that when two atomic waves meet, they either meet in sync, creating a constructive or harmonious effect, or they meet out of sync, creating a destructive effect in which they annul each other. I'm going to say that again because this sentence is the key to what I'm talking about today. What they see, what quantum physicists see when they're looking at atoms, 
is that when two atomic waves meet, they meet each other in sync, creating a constructive or harmonious effect. Or they meet out of sync, creating a destructive effect in which they annul each other. So, you know, you meet somebody and you just click, right? You click, you're like, oh my God, where's this person been all my life? They could be my bestie, they are amazing, they're so in sync with me and you're vibing and you just can't get enough of that person. Well, you meet someone and you think, oh my God, that person just drained the life out of me. We've all been there, we all know. Dr. Bruce Lipton, he's a former professor, professor, <laughs> professor of medicine at Harvard University. He explains that if you drop two equal pebbles at exactly the same time into water from the same height, they will both produce the same wave ripples. So basically saying that their waves will be in harmony with each other. And when their ripples meet, the combined effect will be an amplification of the wavelength. So in other words, it's the merged waves become more powerful. So if we think about what I just gave you as two examples of energy exchange, when you meet someone and you're vibing and you're loving it, they are, you're, you're amplifying the energy. And if you meet someone who is a bit meh and you're not feeling their energy, that is amplified. Interestingly, if you drop the pebbles from different heights or like a, a millisecond apart, that's when the resultant waves meet, they will not be in harmony and they'll cancel each other out. So the waves become weaker. This, I would say, relates to, you know, that sort of sliding doors concept of if I'd met you at a different time, what would have happened if I did this? And if I had just done that, maybe this would have happened. And us holistic people, we talk about how everything happens the way it's supposed to. Sometimes when you're in the moment, you can't see that unless you are that person who can default into this is happening because it's supposed to. I don't understand it right now, but I'm going to trust in the process. But this is this is an example of what that is. So exactly the same thing happens when atomic energy waves meet. They either have a constructive effect, they become more powerful, or a destructive effect. Now, we're all created of atomic energy waves. And because it's impossible to separate waves, the new science says what Osho was saying over 40 years ago, that we are all connected. Our waves are always meeting and getting entangled in each other. Think about an example of being in a room full of people and they're all really quite stressed. You might have walked in there quite bubbly and high energy, but because all these people are really stressed and you can, you literally walk into a room and you feel that stress, the energy changes. It actually, it's a thing. It's real. This is actually happening to us. Dr. Lipton says that the result of such invisible meetings we call good vibes and bad vibes, depending on whether the other waves we meet each other are in sync with us or out of sync. No matter, no matter what, this is why so many people are magnetically attracted. And you can feel people's presence so you can either feel sort of peaceful and harmonious or you can feel that agitation and stress and oh my god this this topic just I just love it because it's oh it's great and it's great to have the science to back it up so you don't sound like someone too far away from science as well because I'm fine with science I don't have a problem with science but it does help in this world in this in the Western society, I guess, that we live in, that science is now, quantum physics more so, is backing up the things that spiritualists, I guess, have been saying for centuries. So in the context of what I'm talking to you about today, this means that it's important to be aware of whether you're in an environment where you're getting entangled in destructive energy waves or constructive energy waves. You might be in a workplace for instance, I'm going to give you an example of one of my clients, actually. She is a mental health nurse and she is in the crisis ward. Now, crisis is basically when somebody has attempted to commit suicide or 
further maybe cut themselves things like that or been destructive to other people so they are the sent to the crisis ward so every single day that she goes into work she is met with destructive energy no matter how hard she tries to be positive and vibe high and you know try and sort of distract herself from her day she can't get away from it she spends you know that she's a nurse she's spending like 12 hours a day in this awful energy i mean it breaks my heart because she's so young but that's what she's facing every single day and it takes everything of her being not to fall into destructive behaviors for herself but it's something that she can't avoid she can't get away from we also experience this more day to day say we're commuting on the train i'm going to use a train example in a moment but when we're on the commute and somebody's rushing or pushing to get onto the train and you just kind of look at them like dude what are you doing like stop it or you know they're just angry or somebody gets quite abusive like move down the carriage like calm down it's not that big a deal like there's going to be another train in a minute what is this need this this awful intense energy oh it just anyway drives me insane now the cells that make up our bodies they know instinctively what is nourishing and what is toxic did you know that? They know, they know, our bodies know, our bodies are clever. Lipton demonstrates this with cells in Petri dishes which move away from toxic stuff and towards nourishing stuff. This is a really interesting study to have a look at, so do look it up. I was, I mean, it was just incredible because it was like ticking every spiritual box, really, um, with regards to energy, it was amazing. And in fact, all animals and plants, right, they communicate through vibrations. So like they'll sense whether the energy is good for them or not. But we have been taught not to listen to our feelings, but instead to listen to what people say. I could go on and talk about capitalism, but I think you guys are intelligent enough to do that or know that for yourselves. We are in a controlling society. The media controls a lot of what our agenda is propaganda is rife people who say there's no propaganda in this country oh my god how deluded are you we are controlled we are in a controlled society people complain about communism well we're just doing the same thing we're just doing it differently that's all it is but we have been taught not to listen to our feelings that's why mental health is at epidemic levels that's why suicide is so high that is why the rates of depression and anxiety in people in this this western world are so high because we're not listening to our feelings we're listening to what other people say which is ironic because I'm doing a podcast doing the same thing but <laughs> the topic of what I'm talking about is your self-care and it's up to you if you want to listen to your self-care or not, not me. So we're not trained to use our ability to sense energy, even though we have it just as all plants and animals have. The work that I do, the work that kinesiologists do, the work that other healers do, counsellors do, it's all based on feeling. It's all based on energy. And if you can... If you struggle with the concept of energy exchange, these sciences, these therapies, they work based because they're based on that belief of the energy exchange. They're based on the belief of feelings and not what other people have said to us. So like our templates that were created when we're kids through to what templates are being, uh, what's the word? validated in adult life and even when we consume social media for instance you know if we're following loads of feeds of other people who are if we're feeling depressed and everyone else is depressed in our feed all we're doing is just feeding that depression we're not actually trying to get out of it or change the way we live we're just feeding our depression if we're constantly reading negative news that's what we're feeding into our energy fields so why did i want to talk about energy today <laughs> Here we go. Now, recently there's been a trend about being kind. Hear that again, a trend. Oh my God, let me tell you this. Being kind is and should not be a trend. It is essential to all of our well-being to be kind. If you're into karma, then this should be resonating. Now, if you understand our energetic effects, this should resonate. 
there are going to be some of you who can't get with the whole we are energy and how energy attracts and repels and honestly from my heart I suggest you take up some meditation and learn from a great teacher who can help show you the path to understanding ourselves as energy but at the same time don't fixate on it this is akin to labelers labeling yourself as this or that now that's a bold statement to make because we're all human after all and we do live in an influential society through the media and our cultures and let's face it life happens shit happens and when it does our energy will flail according to the situation only deep spiritualists who live their lives to serve spiritually can really label themselves There's a pressure created when we label ourselves, mostly on an unconscious level. So you can actually start damaging your thoughts if you feel like you fail. If you feel like you fail your label, for instance. So if you've recently become a vegan and you suddenly start craving chicken, rather than labeling yourself as a vegan, just say that you're making lifestyle changes. Because in truth, to change something so big as your diet, you're likely, you're pretty likely to fail at times. But as I've said before, failure is fine. You just get back on the horse. It's quitting that is damaging. And you can learn from failure and reduce the pressure on yourself to be what you're trying to be. Okay? So be more open to you know, being flexible with yourself. It's just, it's a lot kinder to you, essentially, because kindness is not just about being kind to other people. It's about being kind to yourself. These are the ways to be kind to yourself. Now, I want to talk about kindness. There is a lot of social media currently going around about being kind, which is nice. We should all fill our feeds with more uplifting content to create that good energy. It can be infectious, right? But how can you be kind when it's not your norm? What does being kind even mean to you? Do you know what kindness really looks like? Have you been kind today? The easiest way to be kind is to do what feels right in your gut, your intuition. If you see someone looking stressed or sad on your commute, ask them if they're okay. Ask them if they're okay. Now, this is something very out of comfort zone for a lot of people. So I ask you, I ask you just to think about that person as a person, as if they're already your friend, someone you care about. That's what religion is talking about when they talk about, when they say, love thy neighbor. It means to love without condition to who they are to you. Even if you're met with a weird look, (laughs) believe me, if that person is on the train, if they're feeling down or stressed, your interaction will stay with them. It might even help them to shift their energy. It might help them tackle what it is they're going through. Here's another example. (laughs) I work bloody hard (laughs) to get my mission across about my coaching practice. It's been really difficult for some friends and family to understand my, uh, my changing career. Even though they all know about my depression and its severity through the content that I've shared, it's still been really hard for them. This, and you know what, this is not my problem. It's theirs because... That sounds harsh, but just stay with me. (laughs) It's their problem because I've changed something about myself, but essentially I have changed to be better, both for the work I do and most importantly, for my own mental well-being. I don't want to be depressed again. I don't want to be suicidal again. So if this change in career hurts your feelings, I don't care about that because I have to prioritize myself and my needs. I'm still the same person, but quite honestly, I think I'm a better version of myself than I've ever been. Now, this might resonate with you guys. This doesn't mean that I'm everyone's cup of tea now because change makes you take stock of yourself and who you surround yourself with. Energy comes into play again, and I've broken up with a few friends and family along this journey, but essentially, I'm okay with it. It's sad. Believe me, it is sad. I do feel sad, but it's okay. We're not good for each other anymore. It's a tough pill to swallow, especially when you want everyone to like you. And that's kind of how I've been in my life. But I've learned that it's simply not 
possible to have everyone like you. It really isn't. And you know what? It's okay. You don't need so many hundreds of thousands of people to like you. You just need a few that support you, that get you, that when you're with them and you're exchanging that energy with each other, it's just, oh, it's beautiful. It's just love and it feels good and you vibe and everyone vibes. Even when you're in your saddest, that you can go to certain people and they fill you up. Oh, you're so lucky if you have that. Now coming to my point further and to close, the time and effort and sacrifices I put into these podcasts, my blog posts, free calls, newsletters, social media posts, it's all to be able to communicate with you. It's for you to see that your challenges can be worked on, that there is another way. Now I give myself freely because I have chosen to do so. It is an energy thing. If I give to you, you will give to me. And this is not about giving and receiving in a selfish sense. Well, actually, or maybe it is, maybe it is, but being selfish is not about a negative energy. It's been seen as this for years, but it's misleading. We are selfish because it's our life, our problems, our joys. But if we can exchange good energy by giving and receiving, surely we are helping ourselves reach our goals. So for energy exchange to work in this instance, I ask you to please subscribe, rate and review this show. If this podcast and any of its episodes have helped you, if you've sent me a message about it, if you've told others about it, then please share that on specifically Apple Podcasts. Listen, it's a dog eat dog world in business. People are celebrated because they fit a trend, because they have a great gimmick, but I'm not about that and I'm pretty sure that you can agree, <laughs> right? I get a lot of people saying to me how authentic I am, how it's great that you're being so truthful and it's lovely that you give us some support and how to do things. So you're not just talking at us, you actually give us some tangible things that we can use to help us move along with these challenges. Now I could just create podcasts that are self-absorbing but that's not why I chose to do this. I chose to do this so that you could experience what it would be like to work with me. I did this so that you could get to know me. I chose to do this to be able to help you and in time, hopefully, you'll become a client. Whether that's through paid work with me or just as a regular listener and supporter of the show, it doesn't matter. I believe in the work I do. I believe in the power of the work that I do. I've seen it with my clients. This stuff works. <laughs> And listen, I will do all it takes to get my message heard. And if you can see the value in my work, whether you've been a client or a listener or a follower, I do need your help as well. And with that, please listen to the outro. <laughs> and together, let's exchange great energy in everything we do. Thank you for listening to the Self Care 101 podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, I would love it if you would subscribe and review so that other people like you can find the show. For more tips and tricks, you can follow me on the socials at Frankly Coaching or visit my website to find out more about my coaching programs and how to work with me at franklycoaching.com.